010108, booting from client CD-ROM. So let's connect to a CD-ROM on the client machine, which is the machine we're on now, the laptop or desktop. So I've inserted a Windows 2008 server boot CD into my CD-ROM on my desktop, and we're going to make sure our settings are correct. I right-click on the virtual server, select Edit Settings, and we'll select CD-DVD Drive. And we've got Client Device selected and Pass-Through IDE selected, so we'll give that a shot and make sure it works. Remember, if it doesn't work and if you have problems, you can select Emulate IDE and it should work. And notice that the device status Connected and Connected Power On are grayed out, so we can't select these. We actually have to connect to our client device when the virtual machine is powered on. So everything looks good. I'm going to click OK and let's right click on our test server 1, our new virtual machine, and select Open Console. Since this is one of the first times we've worked with the console, I want to go over toolbar power buttons real quick. The stop button. This is to power off your virtual machine. A power off operation displays a confirmation dialog box indicating that the guest operating system might not shut down properly. Pause. This will suspend your virtual machine without running a script when VMware Tools is not installed or runs a script and suspends the virtual machine when VMware Tools is installed and available. The play button. This will power on your virtual machine when a virtual machine is stopped or resumes the virtual machine and runs a script when it is suspended and VMware Tools is installed and available. Resumes the virtual machine and does not run a script when VMware Tools is not installed. And this button will reset your virtual machine when VMware Tools is not installed and restarts the guest operating system when VMware Tools is installed and available. A reset operation displays a confirmation dialog box indicating that the guest operating system is not going to shut down properly. A few other buttons. You could take a snapshot. We're going to go over snapshots later. Revert to a snapshot. Or open your snapshot manager. Now let's go ahead and power on our server. And when we power it on, it's just as though we're sitting on the console itself and we're working off a monitor, keyboard, and mouse that is directly connected to our server. Now in order to get focus onto our console, we simply need to click on it. And notice the mouse disappeared when I clicked on it. Now anything I type, or if we were in some sort of GUI mode where I could use my mouse, I could use my mouse on the console of this machine. Now look at the bottom left hand corner of the console. It says, to release cursor, press Control alt So I need to hold down my control key and press Alt. And there, my mouse popped up again. So now I'm outside of the console and I can move around my operating system that I'm on now, my desktop. So in order to boot from our CD-ROM that's on our client device, we actually need to have the virtual machine powered on like it is now. I'm going to select or click on virtual CD-ROM, and I'm going to click Connect to D-Drive. Now this is where it gets a little tricky, and this is why this method is not my favorite. The boot process has already gone through and looked for the CD-ROM, so it's past that and it didn't find anything because it wasn't connected, even though it's connected now we actually have to reboot this machine or reset it. I'm going to click the reset button, which in this case won't work. When we reboot it, it's going to disconnect the CD-ROM drive, so it's going to boot up and again, it's not going to find the CD-ROM drive. So it gets a little tricky, but you actually have to go into the BIOS of your virtual machine to kind of pause it and then click on your virtual CD-ROM and connect it and then exit out of the BIOS. And then when it boots up, it will see your CD-ROM. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to click the reset button one more time, but notice reset doesn't work because VMware tools are not installed inside this VM. So I'm going to select the VM, then go power off, and that will stop the VM. And notice it says the remote device and test server one connected to E is disconnected. I will go ahead and start the VM again, and as you can see, the boot up process took less than a second, which is really too fast for you to react. 
I had to click inside the console when the VMware screen was up and press F2, or you can also press Escape to enter into the BIOS. So you gotta work really fast and it's gotta happen quickly. Now what I could do is I'm gonna hold down the control key and press Alt to get out of the console. I'm gonna click on my virtual CD-ROM and connect to my D drive where the bootable CD-ROM I have is on my client machine, so on my desktop. And now that I'm connected, I'm gonna click back on the console screen to give it focus and I'm gonna press F10 to save and exit and I'm gonna select yes. And notice the virtual CD-ROM stays connected, and so now it's going to boot into my Windows 2008 CD that I have on my client. So that's the first way of doing things, and it's definitely possible to do it this way. And next we're going to look at my favorite way of doing things. The boot process can actually be managed. Just right-click on our test server 1 and select Edit Settings, and then up in the menu, choose the Options tab, and then go to Boot Options. Here you have the power on boot delay option where you can specify in milliseconds for how long the VM will wait before it tries to boot off. You can change that to 10,000 milliseconds, which equals 10 seconds. That is good enough so that you can open up VM's console and connect the CD-ROM before the VM tries to boot off. Or we could select force BIOS setup and that is going to force the VM to open up the BIOS setup screen. The VM is going to be powered up and we can connect the CD-ROM at that time.